Shri Gurubhyo Namaha children. So we have started with our new lesson in Geography. We have started with the lines on a globe. So we are going to move with the lesson in further. So first we will revise on what we have seen. What is a globe? Globe is a three dimensional man made. So it is a three dimensional man made model of earth. Correct? So So that is globe. Then we have seen what is axis. Axis is nothing but in a globe the topmost point and the bottommost point is called as axis. Fine. So where do this axis intersect on the globe? Axis intersect on north pole and south pole of the globe. Then what is an equator? Equator is the center most parallel line of the horizontal line of the globe. So the center line which divides the globe into two halves that is equator. So how does this equator divides the globe? It divides into two. One is northern hemisphere, northern hemisphere and the other one is southern hemisphere. And how can we locate a place in a globe with the help of the lines drawn in the globe that is the latitudinal lines and the longitudinal lines. We have just seen the introduction of the latitudes and longitudes. So we are going to continue about that in detail today. So to locate a place in a globe there are two sets of imaginary lines. See the lines uh, it is not available on the structure of the earth but it is available on the globe which means we are marking a line which is imaginary. Okay. So these two sets of lines are called as lines of latitude and lines of longitude. The lines of latitude are also known as parallels. Why? Because they are in horizontal shape. See? So, two lines are latitudes and longitudes. So, the latitudinal lines are also known as parallels because when it is a globe, these are the latitudinal lines. So, all these lines are called as latitudes. So, it is called as parallels. Now moving to longitude, the longitudes are also called, called as meridians, latitudes are called as parallels and longitudes are called as meridians. Okay, So these parallels and meridians together forms a grid. Okay, So see here these lines are called as longitudes. Okay, the vertical lines on the globe is called as longitude and the horizontal line in the globe is called as latitude. So, all these together, okay, so all these together forms a box like structure, right? That is called as grid, okay, that is called as grid. So, with this grid, we can locate a particular place on the earth. So, moving in detail to the lines of latitude, okay. So, it is the distance of a point of earth's surface to the north or south of the equator. That is, if, sorry, so it is to the, see this is the equator we have seen. So, now uh, in the equator, we can see that it divides the globe into two, right? So, what is the work of this latitude? It gives us the clear picture. See, if I particularly mark a latitudinal line here, from here I can find the distance between 
south pole. The same way if there is a line here, I can find the distance between north pole. Okay. So, it is the distance of a point on the earth's surface to the north or south of the equator. This is the equator line. So, to the north or south of the equator line, it is helpful in measuring the distance. Then it is measured. See a particular line when it is drawn, there will be an angle. Okay. So, that angle is measured in degrees north. That is degrees north. The same way when it is in southern hemisphere, it is mentioned as degrees south. Okay. Then the latitudinal lines are running parallel to the equator. So, it is called as parallels. So, as it is going parallel towards the ear, parallel to the equator, it is called as parallels. Then it goes smaller towards the pole. As we have seen in other images, see, when you draw a line, here this divides it into two equal halves and going on the size of the lines decreases. That is a characteristic of latitudes. So, uh, knowing more about latitudes, the equator line is 0 degree parallel. That is, see, when a globe is there, the centermost line, that is, the equator divides the globe into two, northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. So, this line is 0 degree parallel. Then, what happens? Uh, Every line up and down to the equator, it is equidistant from each other. That is, this is the first equator line. So, the upper line, all the lines each other are in same distance. The gap between these two lines will be equal for all the latitudinal lines. Okay. And it is drawn in the intervals of 1 degree. Okay. Equator is 0 degree and the each line has a gap of 1 degree and it is equal for all the lines. Clear? So, the degree, the angle degree is 1 but the distance between two latitudinal lines, okay. So, the distance between each line is 111 kilometers. So, the each degree of uh, latitude is divided into that is each one degree is equal to one hour that is 60 equal minutes okay so equator is zero degree each line is measured with the uh, equal distance of one degree and the distance between uh, two uh, latitudes is 111 kilometers and the each degree is divided into 60 equal minutes clear and the each minute is further divided into we all know each see one degree of latitude is equal to 60 minutes okay so the same way we all know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds so, this is how the time is being calculated across the latitudes. So, you can see the image of a globe and we have seen this is the north pole and this is the south pole, right? So, you can see the equator is marked 0 degree and these are all the parallels that is the lines of latitudes. So, you can find each marked in a degree, clear? So, this is equator and the parallels are given. So, this is another uh, image of parallel. So, when it is across the globe, we can find a line completing a circle. Fine. So, this is latitude. So, after these latitudes are drawn, uh, it divide, as the equator divides the earth into two, the latitudinal lines drawn further divides the earth okay so it is all based on heat that is from the light and heat of the sun clear so heat zones of the earth are marked with the help of parallels that is latitudes 
and when the earth is tilted in nature right even in the globe we can see it will be like slightly uh, tilted right so it is tilted in nature so the distribution of solar energy and the light energy that is the heat and light from the sun is not even in all the places okay so what happens the place is really receiving the vertical lights of the sun see when it is the earth and sun is here okay what happens when the sun rises it will directly hit this place later when it moves around when the earth moves around it will move the sunlight moves to various places so it will be uh, see the distance is lesser when it comes near the equator so the heat and light will be more but the distance in southernmost part of the southern hemisphere and the uh, north pole part okay so that is more distant from the sun so the heat and light will be lesser amount so based on the uh, amount of heat and light received clear again i repeat based on the heat and light received from the sun the earth is divided into various zones clear so that is what i have mentioned vertical rays of the sun receives more heat and hotter than the places receiving the slanting rays so these place these are the places which receive vertical rays from the sun the direct sun okay and these are the places which receive slanting rays from the sun so these places are less hotter when compared to this place this is the hottest place in the earth clear so moving to the heat zones based on this solar energy the each hemisphere is divided into three categories okay so we have seen that we have so the equator is there and this is the northern hemisphere and this is southern hemisphere right so this northern hemisphere is further divided into three torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone the same way southern hemisphere is further divided into torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone so we are going to see that in detail so here the center most line is the equator we have seen and this pink area is torrid zone torrid zone is nothing but the area which receives vertical rays of the sun okay torrid zone receives vertical rays of the sun okay so this complete area is torrid zone next this is the temperate zone this is south temperate zone and this is not temperate zone this places are moderately heat that is they receive slanting rays from the sun so this is temperate zone these place receive slanting rays the same way here also okay so both these places receive slanting rays and this is the southernmost point of the earth and that is the northernmost point of the earth which is called as frigid zone frigid zone is nothing but almost there is no sun okay there is no heat or there is no light more compared to these places there is very less heat and very less light so this is very less heat and light okay it is almost cold okay so that is the frigid zone of south frigid zone and north frigid zone so now moving on to the torrid zone see it is the uh, place between that is it is the location or the region in the earth that lies just above and below the equator clear see when this is the earth this is equator we have 
this is temperate this is torrid zone this is temperate zone and this is frigid zone clear so this is torrid so this is the region just above and just below the equator and these two lines are called as this is tropic of cancer and this is tropic of capricorn these two lines are tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn so this area is this torrid zone is also known as tropical zone okay so the sun's rays what happens when it rises in the morning the sun's rays directly hits this place this particular area sun rises straight to this area so it is directly hitting this place and this climate the climate in this area is mainly mentioned as heat and humid climate okay it is very hot in this in this zone okay so it is almost every day it is overhead okay the the maximum heat we get is in this tropical zone torrid zone okay so one example is south india south india is unfortunately in torrid zone we always receive more heat and hot sun right so here you can see the torrid zone image the this is the center most line which is equator and the tropic of cancer it is mentioned there right it is the tropic of cancer which is 23 and 1/2 degree north to the equator and the same way the tropic of capricorn is 23 and 1/2 degree south to the equator clear so this zone is completely tropical zone so see you can see what are all the zones covered in the tropical zone that is the zones which receive maximum heat this is central america south america almost half of the south america comes under uh, torrid zone africa india you can see uh, the ha half part of the in see this is india and we can see the south india is in the torrid zone and the north india goes to temperate zone okay so uh a uh, half of the australia so all these areas comes under torrid zone which receive more heat from the sun that is the direct sun hits these places clear so next moving to temperate zone so what is the temperate zone it is the zone between tropic of cancer and the arctic circle in the northern hemisphere the same way the zone between tropic of capricorn and the antarctic circle in the southern hemisphere so see this is the globe this is equator and this is tropic of cancer this is tropic of capricorn here is a line which is arctic circle in the north this is arctic circle and here is a line which is antarctic circle antarctic circle so as we have seen the zone between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn is torrid zone the same way the zone between arctic circle and tropic of cancer okay this particular area and the zone between tropic of capricorn and antarctic circle so this particular area is temperate zone clear so these areas uh, these uh, areas receive lesser high lesser uh, heat when compared to tropical zone which is the torrid zone okay tropical zone is nothing but torrid zone keep in mind so see midday sun does not shine directly beyond the tropic zone so after the tropic zone this area receives sunlight and heat but it is not hotter like tropic zone clear so this receives only the slanting rays of the sun so it is a moderately heat zone it is uh, almost very less heat when compared to the tropical zone i explain it once again this is the structure of the earth and here is the sun okay so as we have seen this is 
see this is the earth structure here is the sun okay so as we have seen this is the equator and this is the tropical zone which receives direct sun so then comes the temperate zone which receives only the slanting rays of the sun so these zone are moderately heat it is very less heat compared to the tropical zone so these two pink highlighted areas are tropical zone clear so once again uh, just to revise this is equator this is tropic of cancer and this line is arctic circle okay so the same way this line is tropic of capricorn and this line is antarctic circle so this is torrid zone torrid zone or tropical zone this complete area okay so this area and this area is temperate zone this is north temperate zone and this is south temperate zone so what area is left over only this part here and this part there so this is north frigid zone and this is south frigid zone clear so that is all about the zones of the year now moving to the frigid zone we are going to see in detail it is the region between the arctic circle and the north pole in the northern hemisphere and antarctic circle and south pole in the southern hemisphere we have seen the arctic circle line and the antarctic circle line so what else is left over there only the north pole and the south pole so the region between the north pole and arctic circle in the northern hemisphere the same way the region between antarctic circle and south pole in the southern hemisphere is called as frigid zone so the angle of sun's rays is almost not there in this frigid zone so it goes on decreasing as we said in tropical zone it is hot then in moderate uh, in uh, temperate zone the uh, rays are slanting so when is when it is going to the frigid zone the almost uh, poles of the earth there is no heat at all that angle of sun's rays is almost completely decreased so a very little heat is received in this region and it is almost defined as cold region fine so the uh, these regions are known as as it is very near to the poles and it is very cold these regions that is the frigid zone is also called as polar region okay so the heat zone defined in one single picture this is torrid zone temperate zone and frigid zone clear so this is how the sun's rays goes okay so it hits directly to the uh, from the tropic of cancer to the tropic of capricorn this is the place which receive the most heat then comes this temperate zone which is arctic circle that is the tropic of cancer to arctic circle the same way tropic of capricorn to antarctic circle so these places receive slanting rays from the sun so they are known as temperate zones and finally the place beyond this antarctic circle in the south that is antarctic circle to south pole the same way arctic circle to north pole 
these two places receive almost no heat so they these are called as cold regions also known as polar regions this is the picture so now moving to the lines of longitude so we have seen latitude and on the basis of latitudes we have seen how the uh, earth is dif uh, differentiated into various zones based on the heat now moving to the lines of longitude so it is the distance of the point of earth surface to the east or west of the meridian so we have seen we have seen equator is the center most line and latitudes are the distance for on the earth surface to the north or south of the equator right so for equator uh, sorry for latitude it was degree north and degree south correct so now when it comes to longitude longitude we have seen that these are vertical lines so the center most line of the longitude is that is this line divides the earth into two on eastern hemisphere and western hemisphere so this line is called as prime meridian okay this line is prime prime meridian clear so this prime meridian uh, is the center most line of the longitude and this the lines of longitude is the point on earth surface to the east or west of the prime meridian and it is measured in degrees east and degrees west clear so any degree of the longitude is measured as degrees east and degrees west so the longitude lines are also called as meridians so they are the series of semicircles that run from north to south poles so in see the the longitudinal lines they start from north pole and end in south pole so if this is the center line all these lines come like this only clear so this is how longitudinal lines are there so it is not a straight line like latitude it is the curved line that starts from north pole and ends in south pole now these meridians are of equal length the lines which are starting from north pole and ending to the south pole are of equal length but in latitude we have seen that from the equator each latitudinal line towards north or south poles goes decreasing right so the size of the latitudes decrease when it goes to the topmost place or goes to the bottom most place but it is not so in the case of longitudes it is the same throughout okay the measurement of the longitude is equal and the distance between the meridians are not constant see we have seen that when it comes to latitude it is of equal distance right it is of equidistant right so but for longitude the distance is not equal why is it not equal because it starts from the north pole and ends in the south pole right so what happens here all the longitudinal lines start in the same place so there is no distance at all and when it goes on the gap increases 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 and near the equator the gap between two longitudinal lines is more okay and again the gap decreases and comes and all the lines join together in south pole clear so it is not of equal length and the same way the distance between the merid sorry meridians are of equal length i'm sorry the meridians are of equal length but the latitudinal lines were not of equal length i am just comparing both so that it would be easy for you to understand clear the same way the distance between meridians are not constant don't forget it is not at all equal okay but for latitudes the distance between the latitudes are equal but for longitude it is 
not equal and as I said they are furthest apart near the equator and meet near the poles. So when, when it is a curved shaped line it, uh, it has more gap when it comes to the center right. So uh, almost near the equator there is more gap between the longitudinal lines but when it comes near the poles all the lines meet at one single point okay. So that is the difference of lot latitude and longitude. Now the meridian that passes through the Royal Astronomical Observatory which is at Greenwich, London that particular place is called as zero degree meridian okay. It is zero degree meridian or prime meridian. This is the prime meridian the centermost line of the longitude is prime meridian and it is and it passes through Greenwich Astronomical Observatory in London see we have seen the globe structure right so we, we can see the places all over so the main the center line of the longitude passes through a particular place in London and that place is called as Greenwich okay this is in London so it is in London and the line passes through this place is called as Greenwich Meridian. Clear? So there are 360 degrees of longitudes. It goes around the globe. So it is 360 degrees of longitudes and the all the 360 degrees what happens? The 0 to Okay, this goes 0 to 180 degrees are in the east of the prime meridian and Z, that is 0 to 180 on the eastern side of the prime meridian and the same way 0 to 180 degree on the western side of the prime meridian. See for example if it is going to be 30 degrees east the same way there is going to be 30 degrees west. Clear? So there is 180 degrees to the uh, right side that is to the east side of the prime meridian the same way 180 degrees to the west side of the prime meridian and the prime meridian as I said earlier it divides the earth into two halves one is eastern hemisphere and the other one is western hemisphere as the equator divides the earth into northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere the prime meridian divides the earth into eastern hemisphere and western hemisphere. So you can find the overall image of latitudes, longitudes and everything here. These lines are meridians as I said it is not a straight line correct. The only line is prime meridian it, it is 180 it is 0 degree prime meridian and from here it all goes up to 180 degree this side and the same way the other side. So all these are the examples of meridians and you can see the lines here which are latitudes clear and one more important thing is the latitudes and longitudes that is the intersecting points of each lines right there is there it is there no. So these intersecting points are always in right angle okay. So intersecting points of latitudes and longitudes is always right angle right angle is nothing but 90 degrees clear so all the intersecting points will be measuring 90 degrees. So this is the place I was talking to you about the Greenwich okay. So uh, when you google and uh, when you find the image of Greenwich you can see a center line going through and uh, to the left and right of the lines the places with along with the degrees of the location is mentioned. See if uh, a particular place Sydney it is mentioned it is not clear in this image you can google and find it uh, Sydney it is mentioned and it is 15.151 degree 10 east so it means that 
from this line it is 151 degrees ahead sydney is located there so like that all many places are being mentioned just to the left and right of the lines so we have finally seen these are all the lines of latitude and this is the equator right the same way this is the line of longitude and the pink line is the prime meridian it is also known as greenwich meridian so with this we have come to the end of this session hope it was very interesting see you soon in next session children shri gurubhyo namaha